Um, good morning to all. Uh, hope you've had a good day so far and the rest of it is good as well. Um, welcome to First Wave's FY24 Q1 update. Uh, for those who haven't joined one of these updates before, my name's John Grant and I'm not Executive Chair of First Wave. Joined today by CEO, Managing Director and Major Shareholder, Danny Ma, and Chief Operating Officer, CFO and Company Secretary, Ian Bartram. You can see the agenda for today on the slide. I'll make a few introductory comments before handing over to Danny to take you through the highlights for the quarter. Ian will then deal with the financial performance before handing back to Danny for a broader business update. Will that open your call for questions? So just in terms of the opening, um, first quarter of this financial year, once, a once again, saw significant change in this business, all in the pursuit of getting to cash flow positive while building on the company's ability to grow its revenues. This is a very delicate balance, which can be unbalanced by many things that are outside of our control, but that's our job. We understand that. Um, that's what Danny, the board and the whole team is focused on. To this end, in this quarter, we carried out three relatively significant activities. And Danny, of course, will elaborate on this, but we acquired Silicon Valley founded network automation software company, SISA Networks. So that was a transaction that remarkably was cash flow positive for first wave on completion. We undertook a process of reviewing our investment priorities because you have to make some hard decisions about where you put your money when you've got to get a return and when you're chasing the objectives we are chasing. And as a result, we restructured uh, to deliver cost reductions and aim more of the company's resources at generating revenue from our most profitable products without putting existing revenues at risk. It's no small feat in my view to do all of this in one quarter without losing momentum and we didn't. Congratulations and thanks go to Danny and the whole team for that. Given our clear focus on cash, you'll also see we had larger cash, for us, cash, cash outflows in this quarter than in previous quarters. Ian's going to elaborate in detail for you on this. It is just a reflection of the cash flow seasonality we have in the business, which is why we talk to you in terms of normalised cash flow. We, expect, we expected to get this, this was planned, and we expect to get this and more back in the next two quarters. Let me hand over to Danny now and Ian to elaborate further on all of this. Over to you, Danny. Okay, thanks, John. Um, so I'll just quickly um, give shareholders a few of the highlights before I hand over to Ian, uh, and then I'll come back and elaborate in more detail as, as John indicated. Um, so this quarter, we furthered our strategic pivots um, in, with our investments to maximise and accelerate the op opportunities in the areas of the business which are most leveraged. Uh, we continue to have a strong sales pipeline, especially around our network management products in the US and Latin America. And that's where we get the, the greatest value um, for ourselves. So it's excellent that, our, that we've got a strong pipeline there. We completed an organizational restructuring at executive product development and marketing levels. And part of that restructuring were some retrenchments and that will lower our ongoing cost by $1.5 million annually. And we'll start to see some, some of those um, cost savings flow through in November and December. Um, we made an a all script based acquisition of, of SISE, um, which John mentioned, and I'll go through that in a little bit more detail la later, uh, but it enhances our network management IP and it brings customers revenue and people to us. And our normalized cash usage um, remains under half a million dollars per month, um, which, which for us is um, what, what we have planned. So I'll, I'll hand over to Ian so I can go through some of the finances in more detail, and then I'll come back with a, with a, more, with a broader business update. Thanks, Danny. Um, looking at the revenue and gross profit numbers for the quarter, annualised recurring revenue, which is a key metric for the future health of the business, grew 7.2% over the previous quarter, with ARR now reaching 10 million. Total revenue was down by 8.1%, a fall of 250,000. This was mainly due to the non-recurring revenue being 230,000 lower than the previous quarter. The gross profit is down by the same amount as the revenue, being 250000 which is not surprising given the business's non-recurring revenues are typically at 100% gross profit margin and that the fall in revenue is mainly due to a fall in non-recurring revenues. Given gross profit has reduced by the same dollar amount as revenue and is a smaller number, the percentage reduction in gross profit is higher at 10% compared to the 8.1% for revenue. And the profit margin is therefore decreased marginally to 77.4%.
As mentioned in the previous update, there were some adjustments to the COGS in FY23 that had a positive impact on the gross profit in Q4, but were not relevant to the business's performance in the quarter. And so in line with previous quarters reporting, we have reported gross profit on a pro forma basis to ensure a like-for-like -like comparison of the business's quarter-on-quarter -quarter performance. In summary, ARR is up and hence the business is growing. Non-recurring revenue was down, which in turn dragged down the quarter's revenue, gross profit and profit margin. Moving on to the cash position. The business finished the quarter with 2.95 million in cash, having used 2.65 million in the quarter. This cash usage is significantly higher than the normalized level, but was anticipated and is in line with our internal budgets. There are a variety of reasons for variations in cash usage from quarter to quarter. For example, annual payments made in a quarter need to be smoothed across the year. If you have a range of annual payments spread out across the year, then these adjustments will balance out. <clears throat> However, in our case, all the annual licenses to two of our technology partners, being Cisco and Palo Alto, that were just shy of a million dollars, fell in Q1. Some other Cisco licensing and other operational costs to suppliers, such as AWS, are monthly and hence spread out already spread out evenly across the year. This means there's about 750,000 in Q1 expenditure that needs to be allocated to the other quarters to get a true picture of the normalized cash usage. Another significant recurring item for first wave is the R&D tax offset, which can only be claimed after you finalize your annual tax return. We plan to complete the FY23 tax return, including the R&D tax offset in the coming weeks and will likely receive the R&D funds towards the end of Q2, worst case early in Q3. The estimated amount of this claim is $850,000 and hence an additional income of just over 210,000 should be allocated to the quarter. As well as the timing of significant expenses and, and receipts, there are one-off items that need to be considered. The restructure undertaken in the quarter resulted in redundancy payments to staff that impacted cash outflows and the quarters and the quarter's profit and loss. There were also cash payments for accrued leave balances of the affected individuals. And although those leave balances were fully provided for on the balance sheet and hence will not impact the P&L, they do have a cash cost to the business that was born in the quarter. The total cash cost of the redundancies paid in the quarter was 186,000. To provide a consistent treatment for non-recurring revenues to be included in the calculation, we take an average of the actual results for the 12 months prior to the quarter end and use that as a proxy for the likely non-recurring revenue into the future. This figure at the end of Q1 was $100,000 per month for the side decision and NMIS product lines. For the time being, the non-recurring revenue from SISE's STM product has been separately estimated at 40,000 per month. When we have enough actual data for STM sales under first wave sales teams, we will roll the STM result into a total estimate across the whole business. There are other timing differences and one-off items and taking all the data we have into account a normalized monthly cash usage figure for Q1 of 498,000 was calculated. It is important to have this view on, on normalized when thinking about the business's cash runway. And it's similarly important to understand the working capital balance rather than just the cash balance, as the cash balance oscillates with every payment made or received. For, for example, our internal modeling anticipated the receipt of, of a renewal for close to $600,000 in Q2. This particular renewal was paid by check, as some of our US clients still insist on doing. And the check being for a significant amount was selected for a manual review at the bank and the clearing process took a week longer than normal. And this balance was not part of the quarter end balance. With a cash balance of just under 300, just under 3 million and a normalized cash burn of approximately 500,000 per month, 
you would say the business has six months of cash reserves. However, as the business grows and the burn reduces, then not only do the reserves last longer, but in the case of Enmis, where the majority of licenses are sold on a 12-month prepaid ba basis, the cash inflow from new sales provides additional cash to the normalised cash workings. Taking all these points into consideration, particularly the timing of the receipt of the R&D grant and the seasonality of the Enmis business, with a large number of renewals due to occur at the end of uh, US and LATAM financial years, being 31st of December, the business is forecast to maintain its current level of cash reserves for the next two quarters. With that in mind, I'll hand back to Danny for some further commentary on the business's performance. Danny, can I just jump in quickly before you do and just remind shareholders and those on the call, any questions that you want, please um, key them into the Q&A function or you can raise your hand uh, during the presentation. Over to you, Danny. Okay, thanks, Anna. Thanks, John. So I'll go through a bit more uh, detail on the business. And for, for this quarter, I, I, I thought I'd um, illustrate to, to shareholders what the direction of the company is in a little more detail. So we're really, the company has a lot of opportunities around our technologies and, and our markets to leverage, but we're, we're very focused on the, where the greatest opportunities exist. So, so we're not chasing everything. We're focusing on where the greatest opportunities are. Service providers are our main clients. 75% of our GP comes from, comes from service providers, but 25% of our GP comes from direct to market offerings. So they're customers like NASA and Microsoft. So, so they're also still important to us. Um, geographically, our growth focus is on the US, Latin America and Australia. Okay, so, but we will engage on inbound opportunities from outside these geographies and we are engaged on so, some opportunities outside of those geographies. So basically that tells us now, the core is service providers in USA, Latin America, and Australia, but direct-to-market offerings are important, and we do still engage on other, other geographies also. Our highest margin product is MMIS, so our network management products, and that's where our most significant IP is, and that's core to our international growth in particular. Uh, Cybercision, our cybersecurity platform, continues to be a focus for us, and in particular with the sovereign ISM government platform here in Australia, um, which will be replicatable to other countries should we be successful with it here. Um, global Cybercision clients are being consolidated onto the Sydney platform, and we continue to add clients and partners to, the, to that Sydney platform. The SISA acquisition, which many of you will have seen in the news and certainly the ASX rele um, releases, enhances our NMIS functionality and it enhances our growth opportunities in the network management and automation markets. Uh, it adds approximately $1 million in annual revenue for us and delivers us over 50 new clients. Most of these clients are North American telecommunications organizations. So it's, so it's right in the core of our strategy. It was an all script transaction and it incre actually increased the company's cash reserves by $200,000. So it's a really, really good transaction for us. And it brought six new network management automation software developers. So people that have um, deep expertise right in the area of focus um, for us. And it expands the company's expertise, not just in terms of software developers, but also in terms of um, network management automation, uh, in general, so salespeople, pre-sales, um, and and their CTO joins us joins us as well. So, uh, so it's a really good acquisition for us, right in, right in a in a sweet spot. All script, cash flow positive, and adds a million dollars in annual revenue and some clients and some expertise. So it was fantastic that 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 um, fell into our lap. <clears throat> so our strategic objectives remain the same: um, to operate with a sales-led culture, to grow our revenues faster, and to be capital efficient. So I'll just give you a quick update under each of those. In terms of sale-led led culture, um, I've mentioned we had some restructuring. So we continue um, to structure our strategies and our organisation to focus on converting our sales pipeline to revenues. Um, in line with that, our, our Chief Revenue Officer, Dino Devanzo, uh, we've extended his responsibilities to include marketing and product strategy globally. So we've brought on a new product manager, Guy Brunston, and so he, he reports to Dino. Uh, so this is what having sales lead culture is about, our product manager reporting to our Chief Revenue Officer rather than, rather than in, in the development team, for example. Um, 
So I say CTO John Harper, who, who's, who's, who's going to be um, key for us moving forward, um, also is reporting to our Chief Revenue Officer. Again, not, not, out, not into a development team or something like that, but their CTO reporting to our Chief Revenue Officer. Our CFO, Ian Bartram, has been appointed as Chief Operating Officer um, and is now responsible for um, our corporate functions as well as operations, customer support and development. Um, that allows me as CEO a little more time to focus on sales and marketing technology direction with the, with the product manager sitting under our Chief Revenue Officer and the company strategy. So it's a much more streamlined and, and focused operation for us to execute on converting that pipeline. In terms of growing faster, we, we, we continue to invest in sales and marketing and we haven't backed away from that. Um, our annual recurring revenue is the major focus for us. So it was pleasing to see 7.2% growth uh, uh, in, in our annual recurring revenues. That is the platform to take us forward. Um, so I say as general manager, Jerome Fink has um, joined us un, under Dino to spearhead the growth of SciSafe technology and the cross-selling of NMIS. Um, and we, we've just had a um, strong presence at a major conference in the US as a platinum sponsor of Whisper Palooza, which is the wireless internet service provider conference in Las Vegas. Um, we were, had already planned to be a platinum sponsor of that event. It was our key event for the year. And um, purely coincidentally, it's actually SciSay's core market. So uh, it's also SciSay's um, major event. So um, it was great to see um, Dino over there with, with um, James who heads our US team and, and most of our US sales team. Um, at the Whisper Palooza con conference, uh, we got to meet the partners and, and, and customers that were acquired with the SISA acquisition, as well as expand to um, new, new networks and new potential customers. Um, so we look forward to seeing how that impacts our, our, our pipeline positively and, and hopefully get some customers out of that. But it was a really great event for us. So it being, being capital, uh, capital efficient, um, we are still investing in the business and we're, we're, we're focusing our investments where we get the most strategic leverage because obviously that's where it's most efficient. So where do we get leverage from our capital? Um, the restructuring will deliver us $1.5 million in annualised savings, um, again, starting from, from this month and, and increasing. Um, and I want to make the point that our, our total operational expenditure now so we think of first wave back in January of last year prior to the acquisition of Opmantec. So we, so we now have that old first wave plus Opmantec and now plus SISE as well. So all of those three together, our operational expenditure is lower than what first wave was standalone. So that's that's quite, quite remarkable um, if, if we think of that and we're growing. Um, we're consolidating the cyber decision platform. So that continues and that reduces our operational costs and it creates a density of customers on a smaller number of platforms, in particular the Sydney platform, um, which, is, which allows that business to be more profitable and leverage economies of scale. So in closing, um, cash flow break even continues to be the primary focus. So we're still focused on being cash flow break even in next financial year. Um, the pipeline remains strong and is very pleasing pipeline to look at as a CEO, um, but the sales results are, are key to achieving cash flow break even. So we need these deals to come out of pipeline and, and become clients, but they are there in the pipeline to, to, to convert. Um, so I'm a, I'm a very happy CEO. But before, before I close, um, there's one more slide and um, I say a, a picture tells a thousand words. Well, um, this next slide I'll show you is a graph which um, tells a thousand words, but also tells a story of, of, of millions of dollars and what a, what a transformation is. Um, so this is a slide, I, I'm, I'm in Melbourne at the moment. I presented at the Microcaps um, conference yesterday and that, that, that went well. And this slide was put together for that conference. And I thought it's an important one to share with shareholders. This is what transformation looks like. And when we say the business is transformed, um, these are the facts, these are the numbers, these are our cash usage and our revenue plotted in six month incre increments over the last three, four financial years. And it's quite remarkable if you look at it. And, and this is a trend that we're gonna see continue in the business. Our cash usage going down and our revenues increasing. Um, so hopefully that, that speaks for itself. It is, is um, and that's the story of the business uh, in a picture. 
Um, so, so we're doing well. And as John mentioned, we're on a journey and we're not, we're not at the end of our journey. We continue on the journey, but that's how the journey looks. And, and, and um, that's a, it's a good look. Um, so I'm a happy CEO. And, and with that, I'll close and I'll hand over to uh, John to facilitate some questions. Thanks, Danny. Um, picture tells a thousand words. Picture's worth a thousand words. I'm not sure what the right saying is there, but that's spot on. That picture's powerful. Um, can I just hand over to uh, anyone on the call who, who would like to ask a question? We've got one question already um, from Dev Ramachandran. Uh, Dev's asked, Danny, can you please explain why ARR increased while revenue decreased? Sure. Uh, I think so John, that is... question was probably uh, asked, if you look at the time, it was 9.36, it was probably asked before um, the slide on uh, revenues and gross profit. That's okay. We can quickly recap. It's it's because yeah. we, we have um, non-recurring revenues, which which vary quarter to quarter. Um, so in the previous quarter, we had quite a lot of non-recurring revenue. Uh, this quarter it was about two hundred thirty. It was two hundred thirty thousand dollars lower in non-recurring revenues. Um, the um, this quarter or next quarter, we'll see a spike in non-recurring revenues again. So so the non-recurring revenues come and go. Uh, our focus is on growing those those recurring revenues. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Dev. Ian Leslie, any update on the previously mentioned large Enmus transaction that was going through procurement, Danny? Um, good question. Thanks, Ian. So, so the large US deal that we've mentioned previously um, remains in procurement. We've signed the master agreements and we've agreed all the terms of procurement. Um, but that organisation has had structural changes, um, cyber hacks, um, and they're without a CIO at the moment. And they've, they've paused all their procurement, um, not just ours, and they're restarting those processes in, in January. Um, obviously, that, that creates some, some risk for us. Um, but at the moment, that procurement process is, is paused until January and we'll re -pick, it, re pick it up again then. So still on the table, we're still the selected vendor. It's still the same contract size. It's still as significant. Uh, it has some more risk around it, I guess. Um, and the procurement process will re-engage next quarter. Danny, just to add to that, I think to be clear to our shareholders, that I said in my opening remarks that there's some things we can't keep, have, we don't have control over. This is an example of one of those. Um, the fact is that we won the battle inside the organisation at the technical and functional level, and we were chosen as their as their supplier. And that was by the people who use these tools on a day-to-day -day basis, and that recommendation was made at, by the head lead of that team. That then recommendation gets passed across to contracts, then gets passed across to procurement, then finally has to get a, uh, executive sign off. It's sitting in procurement with all the terms and conditions are approved. The procurement people are pushing, are supportive of the transaction, and we now need the executive sign off. And that's what Danny said about there being no CIO or what is CIO. Um, so we are there. We're still there. But these take, unfortunately, longer than we anticipate. And our job, of course, is to navigate around them, which is what we're doing, doing our absolute best at doing. Any more questions? Give, can uh, Anonymous, can you give us some more colour on the pipeline in terms of size, number, stage, et cetera? Really good question, Danny. Yeah, and a bit of a, a curly one to um, to answer when we don't share forward-looking forecasts, I guess. But the um, I can say that the 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 internal forecast we have for this quarter is in line with our budget. Um, the potential um, is to um, exceed that. Of course, we we also are aware that lots of deals also slip. So the board. Um, watches the conversion from pipeline to um, to becoming a commercial client um, quite quite closely. Um, some colour. Um, so the pipeline is, I would say, the most diversified that we've ever seen it. So there's quite a, a sizable number of deals in there. So there's a lot of deals around the you know 50k ARR, 100k type of mark, which is a nice little sweet spot for us. And then there's um, two to there's three deals that we're looking at in the next four months um, that are very significant for the company. 
So that's that's kind of the color of it. It makes sense, which is nice too. So so three or four deals that are, are very significant, and then a whole host of deals around the 50 to 100k ARR mark. Um, very much um, again for more color. Um, very much back ended. It's the end of financial year in in most of the world in December. So a lot of these deals are are. Um, forecasted in, in December and very late in December. And then we, we look pretty strong for next quarter as well. Yeah, it's a tough one. Thanks, Danny, for, for that crack. Um, maybe if I can say a couple more things about it. So what I do from a director's point of view, I look at the numbers of transactions and the volume of transactions. And what I can say, and I'm prepared to say, is that the number continues to increase and the volume in total continues to, continues to increase. So that's the sign of a strengthening pipeline. And as, as Danny's already volunteered and we've said before, the majority of this is in our endless products and it's and the majority of it is in the USA and Latin America and all of that's a good thing. Although there are now emerging other opportunities in, in South America as well. Um, the other thing that's worthwhile thinking about too is that um, the journey that we're on, as Danny said, we've retained investment in all of our sales and marketing because that's what we need to do right now. And it's it's almost a choice of, of on about every dollar we spend, where we spend it, and clearly we're spending it to where we can get gross return. That's been the theme of this whole presentation. And that is in marketing and converting the pipeline opportunities in the USA and Latin America into revenue and that's where we're focused and that, that's what we, we look we, we have ahead of us one other aspect of this which is worthwhile you're knowing is that when we look at the pipeline when ian looks at the pipeline and looks at the, the, the forecast uh, conversion of that pipeline we take a worst case most likely and best case scenario and when we talk to you we talk in terms of what we believe is the worst case scenario so you know, worst case scenario sometimes can get worse because again, you just have set sort of core transactions in those that can be quite considerable and can move in and out. But our best call at the moment is what we're telling you about the next two quarters of a cash point of view, based on what we see as being the worst case scenario for our pipeline conversion. So I'm being very, very transparent with you on this. This is how we run the business. It's the right way to run the business. The good side, the signs are, is the pipeline continuing to expand. And then the second sign is, are we converting that pipeline? And that's, of course, where our efforts are now focused exclusively. And I don't plan on delivering the worst case. But anyway, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, right? That's good. Any other questions? Thanks for that question to whomever that, um, whomever that um, person was. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Last call. Okay, Doug, thank you very much for listening in. Um, we'll be back to you again with, well, we've got an annual general meeting between now and the end of the second quarter and certainly we'll be able to give you some indications of progress then. Um, but we'll, we'll then talk to you subsequently at our Q2 update. So everyone have a very good day. Um, we're looking forward to having one and um, see you when we talk next. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. <clears throat>